currently there's a lot of words getting thrown out regarding real estate and virtual closings. What's your belief about virtual closings and, and what does that really mean? And, and, and how can that actually happen or, or is it happening or, or, or you know, what, what is going on right now to help keep people safe during the closing and what can we do? Okay, excellent question. I mean, we have to first define what a virtual closing really means. I mean, that if, if, if you think that a virtual closing means just a, a, a someone clicking on a button and getting everything right for them, uh, right sitting on their sofa, that's not gonna happen. I mean, virtual closings, what we, what we do for our clients is that we actually take legal representation to actually empower someone that they trust uh, to come in close for them, okay? There are no virtual closings, and meaning as digital closings in Mexico whatsoever. You still need to have someone sitting in front of the public notary and signing the paperwork for them. That will be a virtual closing, meaning quote unquote. Why? Because they will not be bothered to coming into Mexico and probably we can actually do all the compliance, paperwork, signing the deed, uh, being for them representative on, on, on the legal uh, interests uh, as far as uh, be able to, to sign for them in the signing meeting with the notary. That could actually, we've been doing that for years, basically. I mean, it's not nothing new, to be honest with you. We, we seek to have a power of attorney uh, drafted either in the U.S. or in Mexico, because sometimes if they're here for vacation, they don't want to stay, we just ask them to sign a power of attorney and grant us or whoever they trust uh, to continue with the selling process. And meaning that we, we have been de doing deals that they take early possession with the power of attorney, and that's completely fine. As far as everyone is, is, is really uh, in, in compliance, first of all, that all the paperwork has been done correctly, that all the title search has been completely uh, done in the due diligence phase, and, and that everything is clear and, and the expectations set up for the clients are set in advance. Because sometimes people will think that, you know, uh, you know, you know, you can sign documents digitally or you can actually have a power attorney drafted by my attorney in the U.S. and just send it to me. That's not going to happen. We need to have a very set protocol on how power of attorneys are done and completed. Not all public notaries will take a, and this is really important for, to, for you guys to understand, not all public notaries inter, interpret the law the same. So most of them uh, think that California has restricted the way that we do power of attorneys because uh, notary publics in, the, in, in California specifically don't have the, the, the right to verify and rectify the legality of the document that they're actually signing, okay? They only verify that whoever is signing the, 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 the document is the person who's showing you the ID. They don't, they're not legally um, binding as far as to rectify the legality of the document. And I can send you a couple of links on that on that issue. And also, we need to make sure that if they join a power of attorney through a corporation, that the corporation is everything in due standing, that everything is up to order, and and then we don't have any issues. Having said that, although it sounds like is really you know is 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 there's a lot of obstacles, it's pretty easy to do if we have all the ducks in line and we cross the uh, the T's and dotted the lines in the, in the in the correct order. So virtual closings is possible uh, because people can stay at home, uh, they can do minimal work uh, and, and still uh, empower us to represent them. However, not everything's gonna be digital, okay? So we have to really understand the difference between what is an e-closing or virtual closing in the States and what, it, what could be a virtual closing here in Mexico. I think you make a great point because words are important. So if we start using the word virtual closing, people in the U.S. are going to have a different understanding of what that means. So, so we've got to be clear. If we're going to be using that word, that word virtual closing, we're able to define what that means in Mexico so, um, and, and or say what to expect because it's all about expectations. And I think sometimes we forget about that. When we use words um, over here when we're saying things, they might mean something else to people that are in the U.S. Absolutely. or their expectations. And so we, and that probably goes with all parts of what we do with real estate. So we've got to, we've got to be able to, to back up what we're doing and what we're saying, you know, with, with, with explaining what, what we mean. So that way people aren't surprised with any part of the process that, that they're going to go through.
Absolutely, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and basically what we do uh, for our clients is we set up these expectations very early with a video conference call so you can get acquainted and we can meet on, you know, uh, virtually and actually uh, and, and let them know exactly the steps and procedures that we got, we're going to be taking to complete the transaction the most efficient way possible. Now, in that, in that call, initial call, we set up the expectations being really honest with them. Honest as far as the timing that it's going to be taking, because nowadays, as you already know, uh, all, uh, you know, uh, official offices or, or municipality offices are, are working, you know, part time and, and a lot of the notaries are taking a little bit more time and, and the fiduciary banks are taking longer. Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, no, we, we're not working, we're, we're still working, but it could be mean is that uh, a lot of bottlenecks are going to be are going to be encountered throughout the, uh, the transaction. So expectations need to be set right up front, honestly, and also about the costs. Because sometimes they, they just believe that, that it's pretty straightforward as in the US. And, and many of the times we encounter that there might be a couple of things that, uh, that are coming along the way and we need to set the expectations for them as well. Also something else that we're looking at is that uh, capital gain taxes have become a real issue around the area. Why? Because of the devaluation of the foreign exchange, okay, uh, the peso. The peso has been devaluated throughout the crisis roughly 30 to 40 percent and it went from 18.5 to, as you know, right now it stands at 22.5 but it went up to 25. Uh, so that remember the capital gains are based on what they have registered when they bought the property up to the point that they sell the property. So many times I have clients that say, well, I bought my property for $200,000 and I'm, 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 I'm selling at a loss. I'm selling at a 180. Well, let's take a look at when you bought it. What was the exchange rate back then? And then figure out the profits of what the exchange rate is right now. And most of the times there are gains to be handled and, 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 and managed because the tax liability can actually uh, you know, tear down a transaction. So it, that's also another expectation that we need to set for our clients in advance. Thank you for watching our video. If you're planning on buying real estate in the Rosary Beach area, make sure to give us a call. Have a great day, everybody.